What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I wanna show you how to add a second header button to your header in Squarespace. If you just want the code to do this yourself, I can totally appreciate that and the code will be linked in the description below this video. So you can just grab it and update it for your site. If you wanna stick around and learn how I use ChatGPT to help me write simple JavaScript like this for Squarespace, definitely stick around. This is gonna be the video for you. So because we're inserting an element into the website, we can't use CSS to do that. We have to use JavaScript. So this is a perfect use case for using ChatGPT. And this is an example of how I actually did this for this site. So I'll take you through my process of adding the button and writing the JavaScript in collaboration with ChatGPT. So if I right click on the button and click inspect, that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools. And here we can see how like the structure of this button. So it's actually just a link that is using these classes to style it as a button. Now it also has this lightbox link class and the destination URL is like hashtag L dash, you know, this. So there's some elements here that are actually due to the fact that I'm using the Squarespace lightbox anything plugin for the button. So I'll link down uh, to this in the description below this video. I have their plugin bundle, so I have all their plugins I can use them on any site that I want, and I often you know, use them on my client sites. And uh, the way that it functions is it just turns, it pulls another page from your site in as the light box. So I'm pulling another page that has this content on it um, as my contact light box. But I also wanna add a second light box here, and I want it to be this kind of like, um, five big mistakes grooms make when renting a tux. So it's our opt-in here. And I want that opt-in to be a light box button up here as well. So again, the only way to do that is to write JavaScript. So what I can do is I need to just copy this button structure because we basically just want to like duplicate this button, but update the information. So what I can do is click these three dots on the left here and then hit copy outer HTML. And I'll head over to chat GPT and I'll just paste that in the box here. And we need to do a little bit of cleaning up for this button. So I'll get rid of all the extra space here. We don't need this UE ID. This is dynamic. Squarespace just creates this every time the page loads. So it really means nothing for us. And in fact, we wanna add our own ID. So I'm gonna add an ID equals, open up some quotation marks, and this is gonna be header dash button. And the reason that I wanna add an ID to this button is because I, I need to specifically target this button to be able to add some margin to the right of it to space out the buttons. Otherwise they'll be right next to each other. So in order to specifically just select this first one, it's easiest just to give it an ID that we can target in the CSS to add a little bit of margin to the right. Now I do wanna keep all of these default button styles because that's what makes it look you know, how it's supposed to in the header. So if I get rid of this lightbox link, we don't need that because that's coming from the plugin. We also don't need the data source page or the rel no follow. I believe those are also coming from the plugin. Next, um, we can update the href here. So if you're updating this for your site, like if, and you wanna link to the about page, for example, you would just do, you know, slash about whatever your page slug is. For me, because I'm using the lightbox plugin, I'm going to insert my lightbox URL, and that'll pull the, pay, the content from five tux mistakes page. And then for the button text, you can update that to whatever you want. I'm gonna update it to this. So <clears throat> now we can go ahead and sort of instruct ChatGPT to create this button in JavaScript. So I'm gonna say, use JavaScript to create this button and insert it as the first child inside of, and now we need to find the selector that we wanna insert our button inside of. So the existing button is inside of this header actions action, header actions action dash dash CTA container. So I wanna use the second class to just identify this one container um, because here we can see, okay, this is the container that houses the CTA. So I want to insert my button before this existing one. So that's what I'm instructing ChatGPT here. Use JavaScript, gotta spell that right, to create this button and insert it as the first child inside of. And now I'm going to 
copy that class information here inside of header actions action CTA. And the other thing that I need to be aware of um, is there is two containers. So this header actions action CTA exists inside the mobile menu and it also exists inside this header display desktop container. Now for my use case, because I'm using my um, mobile slide out plugin here, I'm showing the mobile menu on my desktop. So for me, I'm going to want to only make sure that my button is inserted inside of the um, header display mobile. For your use case, you'll probably want to just, just um, insert it inside the header display desktop. So I will have the, um, in my code in the blog post, this will be the class that will be in that code. But for my use case here, I'm gonna be using this class. So inside of header display mobile, let's see, and as a child inside of dot header display mobile, and then we need to do dot header dis, uh, dot header actions action CTA. Copy that class as well. Okay, so use JavaScript to create this button and insert it as the first child inside of this. Run this code after the page content has loaded. Okay, and now we'll hit enter and we'll see uh, what it does for us. So here it's um, making sure that the code is only running after the page content has loaded, so that's perfect. It's creating this button element, which is an A, a link element. It's giving an ID of header button, which is what we wanted. It's giving all of the class lists, uh, those classes that I wanted to add, um, which is great. It looks like it's given it the proper destination URL. The text content looks good. Now it's finding um, the header display mobile, header actions, action CTA container, and it's inserting, inserting it before the existing first child, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna copy this and just paste this right inside of Squarespace. So I have this additional header button kind of section in here. I have my opening and closing script tags. I'll paste it right in there and hit save. And based on what I see, yeah, so it looks like it should just boom, pop right in. I'll full screen this and make sure my light box is working. Boom, perfect. So that's just a quick example of how you can use ChatGPT to write JavaScript. Now, obviously, like I have to be very explicit in my instructions. Um, and I also have to know how to read what it comes up with in order to troubleshoot if needed. Now, in this case, it did it perfectly on the first try, but I also know what this says. And so I can like just tell that, you know, whether it's going to be correct or not. So um, it's definitely not like, you know, there, all these people are like, oh, it's going to take over developers jobs. Well, I don't think so. Not yet, at least. It's just an incredible tool right now for those that know how to write JavaScript, it can just, you know, spit it out for you. And this is all I had to kind of like prompt it with, which is pretty, pretty incredible, um, this up here. So um, I do need to still space this out. Like, as I mentioned before, they're too close together. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and we'll head over to the custom CSS window. And I have a little spot for the additional header button. So we gave an idea of header dash BTN. So I'll open up some curly brackets and we'll do a margin right of 10 pixels. And there we go. So um, with a little bit of JavaScript, we were able to insert the button into the page. And then with just one line of CSS, we're able to space it out a little bit. Now for those that just need a quick refresh on like how the heck could I use this on my site, all you have to do is update the destination URL and the button content, that's it. The rest is taken care of. You can paste this into your site and it should work. And again, I'm gonna update the code to be header display desktop. That way for you desktop menu people, you're probably not forcing the mobile menu like I am here unless you're using my plugin. So I'll update that in the code as well. Well, I hope you enjoy this little preview on how I use ChatGPT in my workflow.
If you enjoyed this video and want to check out more Squarespace content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.